I am Tiamat Legion Medusa. I'm the Dragon Lady and I am one of the most modified persons in the world. I've got 18 horns on my head. My eyeballs are tattooed green and my nose partially removed and reconstructed. My tongue split. I've had my ears removed. I have had 26 teeth removed. Nine scarifications on my chin, as well as I'm working on a full body tattoo. Right now, I am celebrating my first year anniversary of living in Los Angeles, and I am so happy here. I just absolutely love it. And now, welcome to my new lair. Puppies. Hi babies. Hi babies. Hi Alfred. What motivated me to do this, to transform into a human dragon, is um, I was diagnosed with HIV back in 1997. So I began my transformation immediately because I felt that I was going to die and I didn't want to die looking like a human. I wanted to die looking like something that wasn't human. The reason I decided I don't want to die looking like a human is because of all the horrible things that I suffered as a child, growing up into my adolescence, into my early adult life, into my later adult life. I never thought I'd be back here again. My mother and my stepdad ended up abandoning myself and two of my siblings. About two miles from this gate here, I was left at the age of five. I remember it clearly. Like I said, it just happened today. I will never be able to erase that vision of the, the taillights of the car driving away off into the night, leaving us stranded there in the woods. Because of all the things that I suffered at the hands of those people uh, who were supposed to have loved me, uh, including family, friends, and uh, just the horrible things that, that I endured at the hands of humans, uh, that is the reason, the main reason, and the only reason that I don't want to look like a human when I leave this world at some point. I, I needed to look like something that wasn't human. And there I am. My apartment is very small, but I kind of like it that way. I love my new lair. Uh, it's located in the heart of downtown LA in Skid Row and um, I have a, such a great appreciation for this tiny, tiny apartment because when I first moved here from, uh, from Houston, the plans that I had made uh, for moving here fell through the cracks and I ended up being homeless on the streets of uh, LA. 
So that was quite a frightening ex experience for me. One of the, the, the reasons I consider myself so lucky is because I have such a huge network of support, uh, both people that I call and consider myself my family, my chosen family, and the people who are complete strangers, uh, people who are my fans. Um, at the time that I was homeless, um, I was uh, I had used up all my resources back basically moving here. But my fans and my friend and my family and friends got together and they helped me out. Without the help of all of the people that reached out and uh, and provided some kind of financial assistance or even just moral support, I don't think I'd be here today. So I'm really grateful for that. This is my altar. I'm in the process of building it right now little by little. Since I lost all my belongings in Houston, I have to rebuild little by little, slowly but surely. But this is my Santa Muerte. This is my protector, the protector of my lair. Um, in this jar here, da, 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 is one of my ears. <laughs> yes, it's uh, one of my ears that I had removed. Got it in a jar. And uh, I have three eggs that I'm hatching. We have slithered our way onto the 9th Street Mexican Markets, where we're gonna get some really good food to eat. This is what I've been looking for. These are called chicharrones. They're made fresh from pork fat. These are freshly made right there, and uh, they, it just doesn't come any better than that. Ah. Mm. This, we call these aguas frescas, and there's basically um, flavored water with juice, made from the juice of the, of, the, of the fruits. One of my favorites is the pineapple. Ah, oh, yum yum. Happy dragon. People just love to see me, uh, they, they always welcome me. And they always recognize me from uh, some of the interviews that I've done and the TV shows, Caso Cerrado. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Si. But uh, from, from social media as well, uh, from The Wizard of Odd and all the other interviews that I've done, people uh, love me. And it was, uh, it was great fun going there today and interacting with the people, intermingling with them, eating some of the wonderful food. This is chorizo. It's basically uh, uh, a Hispanic style sausage. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my God. Mm. Finger licking good. These are called pupusas. This is another delicacy in uh, the Hispanic culture. Uh, it's basically a stuffed corn tortilla. Um, and it's, this one happens to be made with beans and cheese. See all that yummy cheese there? Oh yeah, I love it, I love it, I love it. And now we're gonna go, mm. One thing that I never really talk about much is my father, my, my real father, my natural father. And um, he's buried here in LA. Um, he died in 1994 and today I'm gonna to go see him, go visit his grave. I can't wait. Here's my daddy. Oh, it needs to be cleaned out. The biggest thing that I always wanted all my life was to know my father, my real father, my blood father, the man that I was named after. All my life I was chastised and criticized and belittled because I was named after my father because I was a, merely really a spitting image of my dad. So instead of it being an honor, instead of it being something great, 
It was actually a curse for me. I had always wanted to find my father, and I did. In 1994, I found him. But it was a bittersweet reunion. My father would die five months later after I found him. All this time, and on the very last time that I got to see him while he was still alive, I just knew that he was waiting for me. I knew it. He had been a, struck with Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's for eight years and uh, was on his final days. So I found him right before he died. I got to cry on his face and my tears mixed with his tears as he cried and he looked at me because all he could do was look at me. He couldn't say anything or move or anything. He was literally a vegetable in a vegetative state. So um, his passing was, um, while it was a bittersweet thing for me, it was hard to see him in the condition that he was in. I welcomed his passing as a blessing to him. I wish I could see you. I brought my, my father a solitary carnation today, and uh, it's very symbolic in two ways. The carnation is my birth flower over the month of January. And also, symbolically, the, the solitary flower symbolizes me, the solitary child of his four, his four children of my three siblings and I, only myself. I was the only one who had any interest in finding him. I was the only one who took the time to find him. I was the only one who took the time to come and see him. I was the only one that came and put him in the ground. Hi, Papa. I'll be back to see you. Since I'm in LA now, it's only natural that I go to Hollywood and have some fun with some people, which I did today. <laughs> Put them up. Now that I'm here in LA, I also call Hollywood my home. We're gonna check out the scene, see how many people I can scare. And maybe I will find my boyfriend out here somewhere because I am on a manhunt. This is Kaylee and Trinity. I just met them here with their dad, Daniel. A lot of people come up to me and they automatically assume that I am evil or they think I'm evil because my, of my appearance. But I like to have fun with those people, the Bible thumpers, the, the ones that, that throw their Bible verses at me and, and judge me. And here we go! Save! Save! Love ya! Nah. My feeling about all this is that worship Jesus, worship God, worship a rock, worship a leaf, whatever. Just be happy and do it your way. Don't go shoving it down other people's throats. Because I really don't think that anyone even needs to believe in a God or a Jesus or Buddha or anything to be a good person. And to me, that's what it's all about, being a good person. I love you. I love you. The message I have for the world, quite simply, is this. And it comes from my life experiences. And that is to never, ever give up on your dreams. Never, ever give up on your goals. And never, ever give up on yourself. Don't let someone else determine your value and your worth. Determine it yourself. Own it. Be yourself. Live your life. And just march to the beat of your own drum. It's okay if people criticize you and don't understand you. Just keep doing you. They'll come around eventually. <sighs> if you like this video and would like to see more of me, follow me on YouTube, TM at Legion Medusa, or Google Dragon Lady, and you can follow me all over uh, social media. Please subscribe to The Wizard of Odd. <sighs>